Hi, I'm Frankie, and in this video, I'll show you how to create an Azure function that's triggered by Azure Blob Storage. Let's dive in. Just before we get started, you'll need a few things if you want to follow along our demo. Visual Studio Code as our text editor for our code that we create locally, an Azure account to create your Azure function and your Azure storage account, the Azure CLI to authenticate yourself for the Azure Function Core Tools, the Azure Function Core Tools to actually create your Azure function locally and publish it to the cloud and see its logs later on, and Node.js if you'll be creating a JavaScript function. Links to get started with each of these will be found in the description. All right, I'm in the Azure portal and the first thing we'll do is create a new storage account. So I'll find storage account under the create a resource section of my Azure portal and I'll start creating one now. I'll choose my subscriptions, I'll create a new resource group, calling it RG AIS demo function blob 101. Storage account I will call AIS demo function store. I'll leave East US. This would be a basic blob storage. General purpose is good. I'll make this local and I'll review and create. The rest of these defaults are fine and I'll go ahead and create. We'll use this storage account to test our local blob triggered Azure function and we'll also use this storage account when we create an Azure function in the cloud. Within my storage account, I now want to create a container where items will be uploaded to that will actually trigger the Azure function. So I'll come to my storage browser, I'll go to blob containers, and I'll add a new container. Let's call it sample-work items and create. Now if I want to go to sample work items to upload something, and then I can upload a file as my blob by hitting this upload and upload something directly. And this is how our Azure function will be triggered. By uploading a file to this container, it should trigger the Azure function, which will be polling to see changes that occur in this container. So when it sees that there's a new item or multiple items in the container, it will trigger the Azure function. As a quick note, you might need to assign yourself more permissions or ask your administrator to assign yourself more permissions in order to upload a file to your container in Azure Blob Storage. These are a couple of the roles that are listed under this specific Blob Storage documentation talking about how you can manage your rights within Azure Blob Storage. You may need the Storage Blob Data Reader role or the storage blob data contributor role, and in addition, you need the reader role. These are both going to be necessary in order to see the blobs in a container and then also add a new blob to trigger your Azure function. A link to this page can be found in the description. Now let's create our Azure function locally. I have a PowerShell window and Visual Studio Code open where I'll use the Azure function core CLI tools to create my Azure function locally. And we'll see the files appear in Visual Studio Code. So in my PowerShell window, I'll start by entering into my folder that I'm going to create my Azure function in. And I'll create it using func function new, where it should prompt me then to what type of programming language I want to use to create my Azure function. I'll use Node. So I'll come down to Node, select that with Enter. I'll choose JavaScript, because I prefer JavaScript native. And then it will start to add the files for my native JavaScript function. Right now it's currently running the npm install command. We're now prompted to choose our Azure function trigger, which will choose Azure Blob Storage trigger. I'll select Enter for that. We're prompted for the name of the function. I'll call it AIS demo function blob trigger 001. Now I should be able to see my files. If I can come over to Visual Studio Code, I can come into demo functions, and I can see the files for this function. Let's run this locally. To do this, we need to make sure that we are connected to our storage account in the cloud. Right now, our local settings.json file, which is where we put our environment variables, does not have a connection to our storage account that is in Azure. It's using this use development storage equals true, 
which would use a storage emulator if I were to install it locally on my machine. I could do that, but I'd rather just use the storage account I have in the cloud. So I'm coming over to Azure. Let me grab the connection string, go into access keys, come to the connection string, copy it to my clipboard, back in VS Code, I'll add it. Now Azure Web Jobs Storage will have a connection to my storage account that is in Azure, and I'll make sure that this connection is used for the function in the connection section of this JavaScript function. This is the path to the container where that will get uploaded blobs for triggering the Azure function. We have the connection to the storage account, the name of the function, and the actual details of what will happen within this function. Right now, all it's doing is outputting a context log and it's saying the metadata for the name of the trigger and giving the length of the blob. We'll test our Azure function locally by saying func start. Our Azure function is running locally. Let's upload a blob to our storage account. Back in Azure within our storage browser for our storage account, I'm in the sample work items container and let's upload a blob. I've added this cars.txt file and now let's upload it and we'll check the output for our Azure function locally. So I'll click upload, successfully uploaded. Let's check the logs. It should show this output in just a moment because the Azure function pulls the storage account periodically instead of working instantly based on a push notification or an event. It also won't work if you have the wrong container name. So this container name is samples dash work items, I have just sample dash work items. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cars.txt file. We'll make a change, that small change to the path, save our Azure function, and with the right container name, let's start this again. All right, now we'll try it again. Upload our cars.txt, check the output, and see here we have our storage blob function processed blob, cars.txt, size 36 bytes. So our Azure function worked. To continue developing this locally, you can just upload a new blob to the storage account after adding logic for your specific use case. Now let's create an Azure function app in the cloud so we can publish this function to it. Back in the Azure portal, I'm within the Azure resource group that I created when I created my storage account that's being used for this function. And we'll create a new function app. In the marketplace, I searched function app. Let's create a function app now. I'll choose to use the consumption tier. I'll call this AIS demo func blob 101. I'll leave it as Windows OS choose node, use the latest, make this East US. I'll go to storage. I'll make sure that we use the existing storage account that we just created, which is AIS demo func store, and then I'll review and create. Leaving the rest of the defaults, I'll create this Azure function app. My deployment is complete. I'll go to my resource. I can see in my function app that I have no functions currently. I'll copy the name of my function app, which we're going to use so that we can publish our local function to it. Great, it looks like our function has been deployed to our Azure function app. Let's see in Azure, refresh the page, and I can see our blob triggered Azure function appearing here in my function app. Now, let's keep a couple things in mind here. In my local Azure function, I have this local.settings.json file that has the connection string to the storage account. This local.settings.json file is only local. My func ignore file ignores all of the files that I don't want to be uploaded to the Azure function app in the cloud, which includes the local.settings.json file. So any environment variables that you have locally, you're gonna to need to make sure are added to your function app in the cloud. So let's go make sure that our function app has its environment variable set with the connection string to our storage account, which it looks like it does. Again, you should never show this, but I'll be deleting this before this video goes out. 
Now let's test our Azure function in the cloud. So I'll come back to my PowerShell and I'll run a command which shows the log stream for our Azure function in the cloud. This is func Azure function app log stream and then the name of our function app. AIS demo func blob 101. Now let's upload a blob again to the storage account and test our Azure function. So come into the storage account. I'll go to the storage browser. Our sample dash work items. I'll remove this cars.txt and I'll upload it again. And I'll see that my blob was instantly recognized and our Azure function was triggered by the upload. Now you know how to use Azure Blob Storage when it comes to triggering Azure functions. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I respond to every comment to help as many people as I can. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.